Welcome friends, welcome to the hangar. Well, this hangar doesn't actually belong to me yet. It belongs to Jeff. Jeff still owns this airplane, but I think I'm gonna buy it from him. I think this is my new project airplane for this channel, Glenn's Hangar. So what we're looking at here is a Cessna 172B, built in 1960. Um, and Jeff found out that I was looking for an aircraft. He watches the Glenn and Friends cooking channel. He reached out to me and said, I've got an airplane that I'd love to get rid of. Um, would you be interested in buying it? So I've done a handshake deal on it. Um, the full deal won't go down until I've had an AME, an aircraft maintenance engineer, come in and go through it completely. We're going to do a complete pre-buy. We're going to look into every nook and cranny on this aircraft and see how it stands up. Then we'll go back and we'll finish the deal. But I thought I'd take you on a walkthrough and, uh, and describe why I think a Cessna 172B is the airplane for me. Now, since all the AV geeks out there are gonna wanna know the numbers, let's get those out of the way right up front. Total time on this airframe is 9,141 hours. So this plane went into service in November 1960. It was used by the Winnipeg Flying Club and it got a lot of use in those early years. Even though the log books from 1960 to 1969 are missing. Not uncommon for an aircraft of this age, not uncommon for an aircraft that was part of a flying club that had a little bit of turmoil dur during those years as I'm given to understand. Next question that everyone is going to ask is how many hours on the engine? This has a Continental O300D um, and it has 223 hours since overhaul. But that overhaul was done in 1998. So it's been flown extremely intermittently. And the last time this plane was annualed was two years ago. It was annualed, the engine was serviced, and then it hasn't flown at all. Really busy day here at the airport. Lots of trucks going back and forth with gravel. I spoke with the AME who did that service two years ago. He's a friend of mine. He's a friend of one of my cousins, um, and he is going to be my AME throughout this project. He said he boroscoped the engine. He checked the oil, checked the oil filter. It wasn't making metal. There was no corrosion in the cylinders because they have been chromed. He said the engine looks really good, or it did two years ago. So we're going to find out during the pre-buy inspection whether that is true. There is an interesting history with this plane though. It flew constantly, absolutely constantly until August of 1973. Then the logbook jumps forward to 1989 where it hadn't flown between 1973 and 1989. No flying whatsoever. I don't know where it was sitting. Don't know how it was cared for, but it comes back to Ontario and it's worked on in 1989. Then it sits until 1998. Again, not flown at all in between those years. But when it comes back in 1998, there's some extensive work done to it. The wings were removed and repaired. The rear spars were replaced. Some of the ribs were replaced. Some of the skins were replaced. A brand new engine was put in it. That's the one, that's the overhauled engine that went in. It's only got 223 hours on it. And so after all of that work is done, it goes back into service and it's been flown intermittently over the years. And in 1998, the aircraft was also stripped and completely repainted and they didn't do a very good job. They stripped it well enough because I don't see any places where there are two coats of paint on it, um, but repainting it, they did not bond the paint properly to the aluminum. And as you can see, it is peeling off, which actually works to my advantage because my plan is to strip this plane bare polish the aluminum and maybe paint a couple of nice accent stripes down the side. Give it that real old school feel. I mean, with this fastback design, that polished aluminum, I think looks fantastic. So it's flown intermittently up until 2018, which is the last time it was serviced. All of the ADs were done at that time or checked to make sure that they were done. From looking at the log books and talking to the AME who did the last annual on this aircraft, I don't think I'm in for any surprises. There might be, you never know. It has been sitting in this hangar for two years. So let's move on and see what we're gonna do. Now, as far as panels go for an aircraft of this age, this is relatively unmolested. Um, they have added a Garmin GPS unit here. This is not IFR rated at all. They've added a brand new Garmin Com that was put in two years ago. 
it's never been used. Neither of these have been used. They were put in and then this was put into storage. The other ones, you know, all of the other vacuum and gyro gauges are from when this plane came out of the factory, all original. And my goal is to replace them, bring them up to date. I think that might take a little while and I think I might do things in fits and starts and I may end up putting in new gauges just to get me through flying for the next year when I can save enough money to actually do a full panel. We'll see where that goes. I mean, I have, I have big plans in my head, but whether they actually come to fruition, who knows? But for the most part, um, last time this was flown, everything worked, so we'll find out. That was a Cessna 206 on floats uh, taken off in the background, if you were wondering. And because this is an earlier Cessna 172, it has the manual flap bar. I absolutely love the manual flap bar. I think that's just one of the coolest things ever. I like electric flaps. I've flown all kinds of planes with electric flaps. In fact, most of the planes I have flown have electric flaps. And one of the things that I can't stand is waiting for the flaps to deploy. I like flying a plane with manual flaps because when you need that, just that little extra bump to get off on a shorter strip, boom, you got it. And so the interior, this is the original interior. Uh, it is all cloth. And I got to tell you, for a plane of this age, it is in remarkably good condition, especially for an aircraft that was used as part of a flying club. I am pretty amazed, but it's all going to go. One of the things I hate about small aircraft interiors is they always look pretty bad in my eye. This one isn't too bad because it is cloth. When you get into the later years of Cessnas, um, all of these interior panels would be roto-formed plastic. They don't fit quite right. Um, they get dirty. You can't clean them. They get cracked. Even if you paint them, they never look quite right because they never fit quite right. But what I really want to do is take out all of these interior panels, take out the headliner. Um, take out this carpet because this carpet is not uh, proved carpet for an aircraft at all and then paint the interior. I see this airplane as a two-seat pickup truck. Um, take out this hat rack, take out this back panel and put in the extended baggage. What Julie and I really want to do is go camping in this aircraft. We want to be able to put in a couple of tents, a couple of bicycles and fly cross-country low and slow look at things, see what grabs us, stop here and there and camp fish um, and just have a good time in it. And this interior just doesn't speak to me for that. I want a very utilitarian painted interior. So I'm going to be working on that probably when I send the engine out for inspection. So like I said earlier, this is a low time Continental O300D, 223 hours, something like that. I have to check the Hobbs meter again. I can't quite get it remembered but it's been run intermittently. It has sat here for two years. Down the road, two, three years from now, I wanna swap out this power plant and put in 180 horsepower Lycoming. And that's not because I wanna fly faster. I understand that, you know, increased horsepower isn't really going to give me a faster speed in this aircraft, but it will allow me to use shorter and shorter strips. I'll be able to get off the ground faster which I think is important to me because I want to fly through Northern Canada. Julie and I want to go to the Yukon. We want to go to the Northwest Territories. Um, that is an adventure that we want to go on in this aircraft. So we'll find out about the engine when we do the pre-buy. I guess the only thing left really is to talk about the money. So I've been a pilot for over 20 years. And during that time span, I've always dreamt about buying an airplane. I've actually dreamt more about building an airplane. I always wanted to build a Vans RV9, but I could never pull the money together. There was always something else because there is always something else grabbing at the limited amount of money that you make. And for me, that was mortgage on the house. That was because I work in film, always having to buy new film gear, new cameras, new storage media, new computers in order to do the editing, new lights, new studio equipment. And then the pandemic hit and I took a long look at what I wanted to do with the next 10 to 15 years of my life. 
And I thought, you know what, I'm no longer going to chase all of that camera equipment. And one of the things that really helped with that decision is that the cost of camera equipment has plummeted. So all of the money that I set aside for buying new camera gear over the next two years, I might not need. Um, in fact, I probably won't need it. So I'm going to buy this airplane. And I'm going to spend my camera budget for the next two years on fixing it up and making it into the aircraft that I want it to be. Now, I can already hear the old timers screaming. The best way to fix up a Cessna 172 is to buy a Cessna 182. From my budget, that's just not in the cards. And I'm not willing to go into debt or take out a loan in order to buy an aircraft. I have to buy the aircraft with the money that I already have. That, to me, is paramount. Live within my means. So, in order to counter your argument about buying a 182, I want you to pause this video for a moment. I will wait for you. I want you to go to controller.com or tradeaplane.com or barnstormers.com and I want you to do two searches. I want you to search for a Cessna 172, sort it by the cheapest plane and see what the lowest cost Cessna 172 is. And then I want you to do another search for a Cessna 182. What is the lowest price you can find a Cessna 182 for with a 200 hour engine on it. I'll wait for you. Come on back. Are you done? Have you found it? Okay, so let's get into the nitty gritty of money. I think money is crass. I really don't want to talk about it, but I know that there are a lot of people who um, think about buying an airplane and want to understand what the costs are. So I think at each step along the way, I'm going to tell you how much money I've spent. And that starts with how much I'm going to spend on this airplane. This is a 1960 172B. 9,000 hours on the airframe, 232 hours on the, on the engine. Um, what was the cheapest aircraft that you found on trade a plane? I'm going to buy this aircraft, as long as it passes the inspection, for $20,000 Canadian, which on, uh, on today's date with the exchange is about $16,000 American. I doubt that you found an aircraft flyable on any of those websites as a Cessna 172 for $15,000 US. There is no way. There are some wrecks on there without wings where it's just a fuselage that it doesn't have a panel, doesn't have a working panel, doesn't have an engine. You can find those for fifteen dollars or $20,000, but you're not going to find a flyable aircraft for that kind of money. And you're certainly not going to find a Cessna 182 for that kind of money. There is no way that I could buy a Cessna 182. So with this aircraft, it's got 900 pounds of usable weight right now as it sits. That's more than enough for Julie and I to fly comfortably with baggage and have a good time. And at $15,000 US or $20,000 Canadian, I can dump $20,000 into this plane and still come out ahead of buying one of those wrecks on trade a plane or barnstormers. I could have a full glass panel aircraft done up the way that I want to have it done up, safe to fly. It's just going to take a little bit of time, a little bit of patience, a little bit of elbow grease, but I think I can make it happen. So I'm hoping you're going to come along for the journey. Um, we're hoping to post a new video every two weeks with our progress of fixing the aircraft up and then carrying on with flying it. The next episode will be with our AME, Chris, and me going through this aircraft on a pre-buy. So, Thanks for stopping by. Hope to see you again soon.